Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so excited. This is the last and final uh, Juara Wellness webinar uh, of the season. We have had some amazing guests and I am so excited. This last one is on a topic that is very, very near and dear to me. So thank you, Jay. Thanks for coming. Um, and so today's topic was inspired really about what all these months have been like for me as a business owner, as a human living in New York City, hunkered down this whole time and living my entire life and running my entire business online. So of course, you know, we've had topics like health, we've had topics like mental health, but then how much, but we haven't really talked about how technology affects our health. And that is one of the topics that, um, you know, we're going to be discussing today and that I've invited uh, a dear friend and also expert in this field, Jay, a uh, cybersecurity expert to come and discuss and talk about. So um, let's kick off. So for those of you who have joined us before, thanks again for coming to the last, last, last uh, webinar series. And for those of you who are first, you can... Um, hopefully go back. I think the recordings are on YouTube. You can see the previous ones. But um, today we're talking about how to foster cyber wellness in an online era. Um, as Jora, as our brand, we believe that beauty is not only skin deep, it's a whole body and mind situation. So just to run through what we are about. Um, Juara is a skincare line inspired by Indonesian botanicals. Uh, it's by our Jammu tradition. Ancient health recipes, we use superfoods um, like turmeric, tamarind, kombucha, and we've been using it for 2000 years and putting it in products that bring joy and beautiful skin to you. Um, but it's also about a holistic wellness. A uh, part of the tradition is about community and being connected. Uh, so it's not enough to put the goop on the jar on your face, but it's really about social connections um, that foster listening and us, because our even our country is like 17,000 islands, it's incredibly diverse. So it's just really embracing people's, you know, differences and connecting. And of course, uh, believing in mindful rituals, because we do believe that as a beauty and wellness company, um, that the mental attitude towards doing what we do is so, so, so important to getting the kind of happiness and joy and greater peace that we really want. And taking care of your skin is just one out of many, many pathways to get there. Purpose of these webinars was to connect to the community. Um, so, you know, gives us a reason to have, Jay, you know, people like you on <laughs> and so many of our other guests. Um, and, and we're all growing and learning from each other. So we're offering valuable contents for those of you out there, um, you know, learn something new or, or, you know, get a little more knowledge on what you also do know and have some uh, real experts who are trustworthy uh, and generously, you know, want to engage with you and, and generously giving their time. And it's also a platform for presenters. So if there's something that you want to share, let us know. We're here for you. Uh, quickly, if you like what you hear, if you go to the Juara Skincare Facebook page, this is streaming. So uh, feel free to share on your page so we can sort of share the love. Um, and if you have any questions, please just go ahead and chat it or ask the questions. I'll be here um, and, and Jay will be here and we'll make sure to address it all. So let's take a breath and get going. Today, we've got Jay, who is a cybersecurity and technology expert, um, director of professional services and operations for Zyla. But really, what's more interesting, or I shouldn't say more interesting, is that you're a father of twin boys. And uh, I get to hear a lot about that um, and how they are such a part of your daily life now that you're at home. So, anyway, we were, so today we're just, I'm just going to jump right into it. It's really about, um, Let's, we're going to learn what we need to know. You're going to share with us the basics of just being online and how that really ties into not just like, here's a fact and a list of information. Now we're all smarter, but how, why, why we care, why this matters in our life and how we can utilize this information to really incorporate, embrace technology just to be a norm, not just a thing that we engage with, but it's just part of our fabric of our being, kind of like food we eat, kind of like our diet. So stay tuned on that theme. Um, so why don't we get started? Jay, welcome. Hello. Hello, Meta, and hello, everyone out there. Uh, thank you, Meta, for and Juara for having me. So I have attended, I think, all but two of these summer wellness webinars. 
uh, and I've enjoyed them thoroughly. Uh, sometimes I can sit down and watch. Sometimes you've been in, an ear in my, uh, you know, earpiece in my ear as I've listened. Um, but I've definitely always learned. And what I love about this program is, I mean, wellness, I think you and I have talked about, really is the integration of all aspects of life. We're all on some wellness journal or wellness journey. And uh, to that, that encompasses nutrition, mental health, exercise, um, and in this case, even the technology. And especially since, especially in this current time, we sometimes rely on it more for connections, be it professional or personal. So I'm definitely glad to be here to, uh, to chat with you today about it. Cool. So let me ask you, you know, when we were talking, we came up with the term cyber wellness. Tell me a little more about about that and um, and then tell us about some more. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> thank you, Meta. So cyber wellness, um, the way, for years, the way I had heard the term, and maybe you've heard the term, maybe you haven't, or you can piece it together and it makes sense. Um, I had often heard it in specific contexts. Uh, maybe in, in my children's school, they had cyber wellness programs, and there it was focusing on things such as cyber bullying, how to be safe online, very important as, as, as children are engaged with electronics and that's a part of their lives. Uh, in my career and maybe some of you in your businesses, you might have heard of cyber wellness specific to cybersecurity for a corporation. You know, are, is your company keeping its data safe? Um, so those are often uh, where cyber wellness fits in a very narrow context. Um, what we're talking about today is really more broad than that because we interact with uh, you know, being online or you know, our digital lives. Uh, again, it's professional and personal. Uh, and it's hard, while yes, you can cut the cord, that you can disconnect, and that's something we'll talk about. There are many times that you cannot, uh, depending on your context, uh, again, professionally or personally. Um, so to that end, it's really your relationship with technology, your relationship with being online and digital well-being um, is just another piece of your wellness journey. Uh, so I'm a technology professional. I'm, I'm, I deal with technology every day. We're solution providers. I'm also in cybersecurity. So that's my profession. And that's my focus uh, in my job. But even in my profession, I'll go to a client and we're talking about, you know, software and how it can help them. There's times that software isn't the solution. And even though we're the solution provider trying to, to, to get them on that, sometimes there's many things. So the same thing with um, though I'm here to talk about technology and digital well-being, and it's sometimes the answer is to ditch it all together. And I'm an advocate for how technology can help us, and I cut, cut the cord as well. So we'll definitely talk about that. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen, and I've got a few things I'll show to help us with this discussion. And bear with me as I click share and take over control. So cyber wellness, fostering cyber wellness in an online era. And I think for most of us listening, uh, we could have said this is an online era for, for many years, but the past several months have pushed more of us to almost rely on it more. Again, whether it's professionally people are working from home or because you're unable to see certain people in person or we're spread out around the world, we're almost forced to connect. You know, Online connections are the only way. Um, so with that, it is definitely an online era, and so that should account into our wellness journey. This is a topic that is actually quite broad, so I wanted to give a little bit of focus as to what we're going to uh, hit on tonight, and uh, because otherwise, as Meta knows, she could get me excited, and it could be 2 a.m., and it's just Meta and I, or it's just me here talking to no one. So to really scope this for our conversation today, um, I'm talking about what cyber wellness is, and, and, and as we've already done, um, Meta already sort of let the cat out of the bag with this idea of a digital diet. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but then just get into some basics, uh, things about being online, what you think about, um, what are you, you know, where are you clicking? Where are you not clicking? What, how are you spending your time? What are your current habits and practices? Do's, don'ts, you know, things that are dangerous or things that are safe. Um, and, and really just sort of our online interactions. Um, but then finally, at least to discuss and get you thinking of how you can build your own cyber wellness plan. And what's important about this, um, I think, is that much like uh, maybe a diet or exercise plan or anything else, I can't tell you what to do. You know, I can't prescribe to you the exact steps. What works for you might be different for what works for me. Um, as I said, I work in technology, so I'm staring at it all day. So it's more important that I not stare at it when I leave the office or leave 
keep my working hours. Uh, whereas someone else um, may not have tech as integral as part of their day to day. So it's less of an issue that that time that they're spending. So again, the prescription for you might be different. So we want to talk about sort of how you can map out your own cyber wellness plan. And as I said, uh, as a technology professional and advocate and proponent of the benefits of technology, I will also gladly tell you the times you should just consider ditching it altogether. Um, and that's probably a healthy way to be. So, so this is where we're going to go. And before we get started uh, or into it, I do have um, to talk a little bit more about uh, Meta. What are the top three things you think about when going online? And these are not right or wrong answers. This is what are the things that you Meta think about? What are some things that you consider when you're going online? Um, all right. Well, that's a, everybody thinks it's questions. Actually, if any of you guys have your three, cause I'm going to share the fun, please also just chat it. <laughs> I want to know what you guys think. For me, I, I would have to say airtime. I mean, just as a general concept of just how, how, how am I on a social media, for example, is a part of my job. It's personal, but it's part of my job. So to the point where like you get off on your working hours, it's constantly on. Um, my, my company is a digitally based you know, company, you know, to, so I work, I, I think about that. I just like everything else, just doing everything else just in life. Um, security, because I think I'm on so much. Sometimes I wonder certain things like if I download this app, because I'm actually curious, am I giving my, uh, am I going to anything from something as basic as, am I going to download something onto my iPhone? That's going to slow down everything else is because it's some hack developer that that i've never heard of or is it okay but it's so cool i want to try this filter you know? <laughs> but this avatar maker looks so fun um you know and sometimes it's just like TikTok. just just what is what is safe what's not like it's my job literally to be fluent in in various social media mediums and even one i'm kind of like but do I even touch this one or not? So, so sometimes I'm actually not sure about what's safe or what's not, or like the face app, uh, you know, my brothers, my siblings send me all sorts of versions of me when I'm like 85 years old and I'm like, Oh, no, the Russians have my data or whatever all that was about. So, so I do kind of wonder, and then just, just, I mean, shopping, getting the best deals online, not getting caught in that rabbit hole and, and trying to manage like getting there to buy what I want to get and not, and maybe, you know, to, to your point, it gets to that whole, yeah, I'm just online and everything the, the thing is like in the real world, you actually have to go to physical stores, but here everything is just a URL away and mm -hmm. a Google search for the directions. And, and, and so it's kind of that whole shopping deal making when it becomes fun to just now I'm just tired because I'm just analyzing what the best deals are. So um, it looks like uh, Andrea is saying getting info connection between business and social media. Will my will my online time be valuable? So I think it's mm -hmm kind of on that bucket of how much is too much. I don't know. So that's my long answer. Yeah, and these are great. Again, there's, this is, is very always interesting to hear is what are people thinking about? What are they most concerned with or what's most valuable to them? Uh, and whether it's good or bad, it's are you leading with I'm concerned about how much time or are you leading with I need this for my work? I need this um, for my profession, uh, you, you know, and, and are the sources trustworthy? I just saw that, that come up in there. So this is is what I frame as things that I try and keep in mind. Um, so again, I, these are things that, that work for me. And it's actually a bit more broad. And the reason I, I keep it a bit more broad is that, um, you know, today we might be in a panic about TikTok, but a year from now, we may not even hear about them again, but there might be something else. So the way I think about it, and I'm going to share yet again, um, the things, the way I frame it is actually more of, the first thing to think about is, am I thinking about what I'm doing? And, and that what I'm really saying is, am I being mindful? Am I being conscious? Am I being intentional with your action? Because there, whether it's shopping, whether it's reading the news, social media, work, emails, whatever it might be, if I'm being intentional with my action, I'm probably, it, it, there's a good chance it's going to be a little more beneficial to me. You know, not necessarily, but um, I don't know about you, Meta, but there are countless times that I will have my phone in my hand, I will have my, my thumb will be scrolling through. And if I stopped, I think I don't remember pulling my phone out. I wasn't, didn't consciously pull my phone up. I didn't consciously think I want to open this app, but my muscle memory, my unconscious, I'm just doing it. 
And for me, that's when I think that's probably not a good practice. Um, so being mindful and intentional is good. And that also applies to when you're worried about, okay, am I experimenting with an app or a link I'm not sure I should click on? Well, just stopping to think and be mindful about it might help you. It may not answer all your problems, but it might help you in, in, in thinking of that. Um, another, another bit is, uh, is this helping or hurting my overall wellness? And am I being safe and secure? So in terms of uh, overall wellness, there's also, you know, what are your larger goals? What are you trying to achieve? You know, somebody might say, I, you know, I really need to unwind and, and I'm choosing to use my laptop or tablet or phone to do that. And that's not necessarily bad. There's non-digital ways to unwind. But if your wellness goals are you want to be positive, but you spend time reading negative news articles, that's probably not contributing to what you're trying to achieve. If meta, um, if you were in a situation where you needed to be saving money, then going shopping mindlessly would not be of use. However, if you had an intention and, and something you needed to do and your goal is I need to purchase something and I want to get the best deal, then it is a good use of your time. So again, being mindful, but then also, is it supporting your overall goals? Um, meta, I know you've been working on a book and I imagine that book takes a lot of time. So if part of your goal is that you want to get this book out, yet you're spending seven hours a day, I'm exaggerating, seven hours a day scrolling through social media, that's probably time that's not helping you get to your goal. So again, what are your overall goals, be they wellness goals or just, just in life? Um, and then the other piece that I, this is where my profession and personality comes into play, is the security and privacy is what you're doing safe. Uh, because that is a genuine concern, especially I I'm, have to be concerned with what my children are doing online. I have to be concerned with what I might be doing online. Uh, this can go into sources of information, links that you click, apps that you spend too much time on, um, and what those apps might be doing that you may not be fully aware of. So for me, privacy and security are also critical elements uh, that should be somewhere in, in your mind. So I have to ask, what is the difference between security and privacy? I just thought of that as you mentioned that because it, it, it blurs in one sentence. We're always like security, privacy, and where's my data going? It's just this. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And that's, that is a great question because they're often used together or near each other and, and uh, that um, and, and they, they can be based on similar items. So it, usually when it comes down to, um, you know, we all say that when you're putting apps or going online, your information is out there or somebody could get your information. Now that information could be bank account information and then that's more of a security issue. Uh, or it could just be personal information, you know, and this goes into privacy, you know. So maybe I don't want people knowing where I live or where my children go to school or my children's names. Um, you know, so there's the, the privacy um, that may not, and then there's the security. So someone knowing my address could be a security issue or a privacy issue. Uh, so there, you're absolutely right. There is some overlap and blur, but then there's just sometimes that, you know, I, maybe I really had a really bad day and I, I uh, uh, you know, got angry and yelled at my son. And then I wrote a message to you saying, oh, I'm a horrible father. I yelled at my son. And that's just personal. You know, that's just private. It's probably not a security hack if it goes out in the world, but it, it is private. So um, that's something to keep in mind is, uh, you know, is this going to, is information that you, uh, if your information is not secure, it could have a security ramification. The easy go-to is, you know, bank account, somebody knowing where you live, breaking into your home, the negatives, um, or it could just be privacy uh, and information. So. Like you just know my email address and you know my name and that's what I need to input to play this game. <laughs> okay, I like, okay, play the game. I like the way you said that because then this also goes into your uh, wellness plan, your cyber wellness plan and your digital diet, knowing who you are. Um, if we set technology aside, we all probably have different, uh, you know, privacy uh, personalities. Um, there's many things. I'm just a private person. Uh, I, I would just keep private just, just in principle or just how my personality is. Other people are freely share everything that happened to them with a stranger on the train. So the same thing happens with, with being online um, is that 
you know, we're sharing information and you might be conscious about this because you're, uh, you know, you're posting a picture of you and someone else in social media at, at a location and you might be consciously doing this and you're, it's a public Instagram or uh, maybe you have a wide selection of friends. Um, what years ago, and this still is the case, uh, what people didn't know is they might be posting that picture on uh, Instagram or Twitter from their mobile phone, which has the geo tracking location information in it. So then suddenly it's not just a friendly picture, but then somebody actually could know where you are and they know you're not at home or that, you know, you're in some location. Uh, and, and so then, you know, the, then the privacy can bleed into security. Um, this is not to scare you, but this is going back into what you said about playing the game. There is a bit of a grand bargain we play with the internet, you know, to get a lot of access to this stuff. We're saying, you know what, I'm going to give you this information. Um, now there are laws about how, what companies do with this information, what they should collect. You are no doubt not even reading that thing that you check off that says, click, I agree to the updated terms of service that every few days are getting updated, that somewhere in there is probably saying, we're going to track everywhere you are, we're going to sell this information to third parties, you know, and we see people go and hauled up in front of Congress because they were selling information that people weren't aware of. These are all great discussions and things to be aware of. Um, but there is a little bit of that game to play that, hey, I am giving some of my information out in exchange for free email from, from Google. So the ads are targeted towards me uh, in exchange for, I signed up for one service and several services over, I suddenly get an advertisement for something because my information is sold. This has been going on for years when you, back before the digital days, you'd sign up for something or a, a subscribe to a magazine. And next thing you know, you're getting a lot of new junk mail. And I know that people would used to, they would sign up for magazines under like a fake name so they could see where the stuff was coming and trace it back. But now in the digital world, it's coming all over the place. Is there, I mean, is there is an approach kind of like you just have to take a calculated risk, like, okay, I'm okay giving this up in order to like, like the funness of knowing how long I would last in a zombie apocalypse, you know, if I play this game, how many of us have done the zombie apocalypse game or like what character in some movie are you, you know, that whole kind of stuff. I mean, I kind of sometimes will say yes, because it feels like it's harmless, like this trade of information, the desire for the access of whatever this value added product is um, outweighs the things that I'm going to do. The, the, it sounds like I'm going to give up some of my privacy for gain as long as it does not compromise and get me into security land. I mean, is that kind of... Absolutely. So, so this again goes into you have to know your own personality and choices of, about what you're willing to give up. Um, I think for most people, it, we've, we're way past the, the, the dream of living off the grid. For most people um, at this point, it's like, you can't just say, oh, I'm just gonna go off the grid. Nobody's gonna be, your information is already out there. Uh, so it's almost better if you just know your information is out there. Um, you should still be practical. You should still be cautious. Please take the time to read it. I, actually, do you get uh, messages on websites, especially after GDPR in Europe? because in the European, they were definitely uh, fighting more for privacy. And so that now websites and companies, if they're collecting your information, they need explicit permission. Not only that, if you tell that company that you want them to forget about you, they have to go and remove any references to you. Um, that's much stronger than we have in the States. However, California's recent law is actually similar. And then if California does it, it then companies have to, pretty much all companies have to do it. Um, but so yes, you need to be aware of what's happening. I, I'm a private guy. I was only, it's only recently, I just finally bit the bullet and I came on social media. Um, when Gmail was first out years ago, I was a cybersecurity professional. I said, I'm not going to give, let Google read all my emails to tar track, uh, you know, target my ads. Guess what? I have probably about eight Gmail accounts today. So yes, I too said, you know what? You're right. There's a point where you could make a cho life choice to live completely off the grid or you can accept some risk and understand that it's this grand bargain. You know, I, I, I get this and we give something, you can try and mitigate it. You can go through and when you get those little, hey, we've updated our cookies policy, you can go through and say, deselect, deselect, deselect. They make it hard for you, but you can do it. Um, honestly, as a professional, I usually just say, yes, okay. So even you as a cybersecurity professional you just I mean I, I guess that for, for the layman of us what's the worst that can happen if we just go around willy-nilly clicking on things right now I mean what, what's the worst that could possibly happen at least it's more like checking off the from the wellness conversation 
just just give us the simple. What's the worst? What can happen? Is there something that we should just not do and something very practical that we should do? Just Okay, absolutely. So, um, and then I'll also talk about me because again, I came from a, a state of I want to be very secure and private. I don't want to give my information out. And then at some point, you hit a tipping point where it's actually better and more liberating just to say, all right, I'm not going to live in fear. My stuff is out there. Um, a couple of things I will say is that while companies and uh, everything should protect your data, they should not leak it. They should not uh, sell it without your permission. There's there's a lot of things that they should treat it well. I also take the approach that if I put something out into the world, if I put a private, if I tell you a private message uh, meta and I send you an email talking about some horrible thing I did in my business, my business is collecting massive amounts of email. That stuff will be found in an instant if somebody gets your emails. Um, and again, whether that's legal or illegal means I work for, you know, uh, federal agencies that, that have the authority to go get this data. Um, but the fact is, once I read that, once I first saw that, when I saw my own emails and I was able to search through it in this massive program that we sell, um, I said, wow, never put anything in writing. Um, but the fact is I still do. I mean, I know that it's out there and you, if you put something out in the world and own it, um, I'm getting way off your question. This goes to the whole, I could go to 2 a.m. But I will say kids today are growing up not really fully understanding that when they put stuff out there, it's out there forever, potentially. So even though, oh, it was a private message and stuff's out there. So it's really important to teach the kids. Um, I mean, I still think us adults we need to be aware of it too, but uh, a lot of us also come from a school of thought of, I don't wanna put that out there. Or as soon as I put it out, even if it's private, it could, it could propagate somewhere else. Now, your other question is, what's the worst that could happen? Most times it's purely just data you're getting you know somebody's making money off of you but it's not necessarily even directly somebody's selling information advertisements are coming to you that are targeted towards you um and guess what i didn't even think about this until just recently for me i always thought targeted ads they made me cringe because i said oh you're tracking me you know what i'm doing it didn't occur to me until quite recently that some people like that. They actually say, I want you to advertise things I want. I don't want to see something I'm not interested in. And it didn't even occur to me that, that some people, that is what they want. There's a convenience, and that's generally what we talk about in security, is you can go super convenient, but it's unsecure, or super secure, but then it's not convenient. And so you got to find that, that yeah. risk threshold. Well, Going back, because I do need to close the loop on your question, what's the worst that could happen? If you do start clicking and downloading untrusted things, you could then have bad things happen. You should have antivirus on your software. Be careful of where you click. Um, just be mindful. Being mindful is probably the best thing because if I tell you to look for one thing, next next week it'll be something different you need to look for. So be mindful of your actions and where you're clicking. Are these, take an, a couple extra seconds to say, hey, this is a really good deal on that thing I'm about to buy. I've never heard of this store. Nobody's reviewed this product. What, what's, what could be up here? I've actually found that with messages from friends that, my gut instinct goes, this person doesn't talk this way. And on a few accounts, their accounts have actually gotten hacked. And I've actually gotten messages from people who have hacked their accounts trying to get my info. So yeah, there has been a trust your gut. Actually, our business partner, our, our business partner, her phone got hacked. And I got a message from her, which I would never, ever think twice. I'd be like, yeah, sure. But then I was like, wait, why would the security go, go to my phone and not hers? And then it turned out it was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so this again goes back to if you can chase every threat, every possibility, if you are just aware and mindful and intentional and, and take a pause because it's so we, we do things so quickly. Um, it's very common in the corporate world. This is widespread. It happens in my company all the time. There will be fake phishing emails saying it's like your CEO or some a vice president in the company because somebody gets that public information. This is just public information, privacy, but they're able to leverage that and send a, a fake email. And the moment they start saying, they say, hey, I need a favor. And you're like, oh, okay, I wanna do that. But the moment they start saying, buy me a bunch of Google Play cards and iTunes cards, you know it's, uh, it's the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. So anyways, yeah, trust your gut and use your common sense as well. Um, so as we move on, if anybody has any specific things that just come up to mind, it's like, what about when I get this? Or like real life situational things, now's the time to 
bombard Jay for things you've always wanted to know. Like, you know, like just, just whatever these little things, we'll, we'll get them in there. So yes, moving on. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so you mentioned TikTok and I mentioned earlier about like uh, Facebook ads, online quizzes. And so in a similar mention, um, you know, there's a lot of here is, is TikTok is, is the Chinese government stealing information or is it just a company stealing your information? Um, and I actually don't necessarily going to comment on what it is or isn't. It's again that do your risk assessment of, you know, are you willing to have some of your information out there? Uh, your information is out there. Your information is linked. If you want to firewall aspects of your life, uh, you can do the, I have an email account I only use for mailing lists and, uh, you know, things that I'm shopping and other things. I have a mailing list I use for personal correspondence. I don't mix the two or I have multiple email addresses. That's a way you can firewall a little bit and that helps keep things clean. But even every few years, I need to rotate and clean that up and clean that over. No, that's def definitely true, especially when we, and then one last thing, I, I realized the peer pressure, I don't know if you guys feel it, but like when somebody plays, you know, hey, everybody let's get on this game and you have to download something because everyone is on it. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to download this thing, but then it means I can't play with everyone else. So yes, to that whole point of, how badly do I want to be connected to my community through this particular thing versus not? But anyway, so um, moving on. Oh, um, a quick question. And I don't know if you want to address this now or throw it later, address later, but how can I tell which are the best antivirus programs? Do you do it by reviews? Yeah, absolutely. With anything, do some research. You know, don't look at the first thing you see. Do a couple of research. There are the reputable name brands. Um, McAvee uh, is, is one's been around forever. Go to the reputable name brands, but do some research. Ask a friend. Ask somebody to say, "Hey, what do you use?" Um, take that time to to you know make a conscious decision. Uh, I think again, all of this can come down to is take a pause, do some research. Uh, same thing. I think there was a comment earlier about how do I trust the source for news. Well, check a few sources. That's probably just good practice. How do I know that this deal isn't a scam? Check a few sources. Um, just understanding that, uh, um, you know, there, there's different options. Out there. So, cool. Let's, uh, we can move on, I guess. All right. Well, so, so on these, um, Meta, because you're talking about like, uh, you know, I don't know, the, the, the filters or apps that make you look like you're 80 years old or uh, any of these things and you want to be a part of that, that game, that actually could be a good segue into talking about, well, how does this fit into your digital diet? You know, are you achieving, achieving your goals? Um, so really, um, and I'm going to once again need to uh, share my screen for a moment. So... The, as we talked about how one way to look at your relationship with uh, with you know being online or apps or technology is probably similar to how you might look at your relationship with food um, is that you know it's it's sometimes not necessarily what you're doing but maybe how much of it you're doing um, like I said it's it's probably I will be the first to admit I go down YouTube rabbit holes all the time where I'll look at one video and then another and then another and another and honestly, a little bit of that's for me, a little bit of that's okay. The problem is if I find I'm losing sleep over it. I mean, literally I think, oh, I'm gonna spend a few minutes doing this. And next thing I know it's 3 a.m. And I think, okay, I've lost sleep. Uh, I could have had time better spent. So similar when you're getting all those, hey, download this app. Hey, we're all playing this game. It might be fun to do that, but you might also stop and say, hey, what's my uh, digital diet, can I afford it? So um, if we look here, it's, it's again looking at what, um, if you look at different activities, and I think at the, the top of it, uh, we had somebody mention that they use, uh, you know, online for business, for connection, for communication. So I typically look at many ways you work online or, or your digital relationship is, it's either uh, communication, all right, and that can be good or bad, depending what type of communication. It is connection. Um, you know, it's somehow connecting with people. Um, and then it's also consumption. So, you know, I can, I can look at this, this phone and I can read an amazing novel and enriching philosophical, or I can, I can, you know, learn a new language, or I could read some gossipy trash and negative news. And, and you know, so what I'm consuming, um, you know, could be good or bad. Like food. <laughs> I'm not a fan of restricting and saying, I will not eat sweets. So it's more like in this this uh, pyramid, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Binge watch something, play, have some fun, but also look at are you achieving your wellness go goals? Is what you're doing nourishing you? Is it giving you energy? Um, is it helping you manage your time? Uh, or is it 
uh, you know, sucking up that time, you know, taking away that energy? Is it, it may give you a negative outlook on things. It's very interesting because I actually think of this diet kind of the way, take a look at the wellness pillars of my life. Like certain things I struggle with is getting enough sleep, sleeping on time. Um, and since we've been pretty much less restricted with, in movement around until I could just recently, this last month, I've been in the house the whole time, just movement. So I try to have apps like a sleep tracker, like a, like a health steps app and sleep. So it's, it's like, the base of the pyramid is like you need your vegetables, you need your greens. I need my sleep. I need, and 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 I do have, you know, I want to continue the meditation practice. So it's like it's become the three apps have been, and I don't know if other people kind of have this use the same apps, but I'll have my sleep cycle app, I'll have my headspace app, and then I'll have just my health app. Um, and I even do like Noom, which sort of tracks what I eat. Uh, more just for an awareness standpoint. And that's kind of like my pillars. And then I layer on other stuff like YouTube could be like, if I really need to learn how to do something that's cool. And then I'm watching a couple of things on the Avengers or Umbrella Academy, you know, cause I'm kind of a geek that way. And that's cool. But if it's my like fifth video on like the cast of Umbrella Academy you know, or funny <laughs> bloopers and Avengers. And then here I am, you know, with other deadlines, it's probably not so good. Um, so it's interesting how I actually do map it out with like, what are parts of my life that needs the most treatment, uh, furnish the right technology to support that and then go to the next level, which is like, this doesn't hurt. This, this could be good, but could also hurt. Um, I'm actually trying to think of, of, of unhealthy things that take away. Um, definitely news. You're right. Like when I check the news, if, if I feel a piece of news and it's making me really emotional, like I've learned, um, check, you know, check, check your sources. The first thing I feel is triggered as opposed to informed. Um, so, so, so if I, if I feel like I'm, you know, triggered, then, then just being aware, like maybe that's not, that's Absolutely. not quite either the right news source or the right angle, or there's something else or, or, or keep moving on or something. Right. And, and, and so I, I completely agree that things I've noticed, and even recently, uh, I mean, this is, again, this is always an ongoing struggle. Um, I'll notice about myself. I personally like to do a bit of mindless surfing, you know, as an unwinding at the end of the day. Um, note, it's not good to be looking at a screen right before you go to sleep. That's what studies have shown. So that, that, that is, I'm going to confess that. However, I do love to, um, you know, do some unwinding. Um, and even if, I, if I'm binge watching something, depending on what else is going on in my life, that can be an okay thing. But what I've noticed is, and this was quite recently, I would start watching that one video, one article, and then another, and then another, and then it was quite late. And then I started realizing, oh, this is a problem. And uh, currently I'm on a practice where I make sure I have my eyes shut by a certain time. And I've never given myself a bedtime before in my life, but I'm currently on that practice to give myself that the practice because I was realizing that, oh, I, this, is CP, this is becoming a problem. This is not, not, not a, a small unwinding. But a couple of things to reframe it, much like with food, um, a lot of the, the choices that you might make, sometimes you feel, oh, I can't do that. But sometimes you flip it around, and you go like, I really love to eat these vegetables and I love to eat this and I don't love to eat that. And, you know, the si similar way, the way I looked at it in this past few weeks as I've been doing this, you know, trying to make sure I have, have a firm bedtime is I realized, wow, look at all this time I got back. I didn't waste two hours mindless surfing and losing sleep, I got sleep or I ended up doing something more productive. So sometimes reframing it as look at the time you're gonna, gonna get back in your life. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so those are some, some positives as well. You know what, there's actually a great question from Sheila. And then there was one I just realized I missed uh, before uh, about Max being less prone to uh, viruses than, than PCs, if that is still true, that is one question. If that's a quick answer um, to feel free to address that. And the other question is any advice to reduce or protect against notifications as a constant distraction when concentration is needed? Okay. Uh, the Mac PC thing, um, statistically, you can say uh, Macs are targeted less than PCs just because of the percentage that are in the world. Um, but none of them are more safe than the, I mean, so it, it's a fallacy if you're, you're fooling yourself if you think, oh, I'm safe because I'm on a Mac. Um, but yes, yeah, statistically, there are more PCs, more operating systems, so there's more chances that they'll be attacked. Um, of course, these days, everything's mobile. It's the mobile phones you got to work out, watch out for. So. 
is that actually a concern? Should we be concerned about our mobile phones getting hacked? I mean, um, I, I worry about it from the apps that I download that are from unknown developers or just buggy, buggy apps. And right, they, and, and this, this could depend. Um, if you're downloading from, you know, if it's a, a known phone, you're getting from a known source in the store, um, it's, it's likely been vetted to a fair point. That doesn't mean nothing's foolproof. It's this risks we take in life to, to move forward. Again, don't be too quick to download things. Um, but absolutely, uh, you know, just there are risks to everything. Uh, so maybe wait a day or two before you download it, see what other people are saying, see, check the reviews. Um, phones can get hacked, but it's probably not, um, it's not as, as much of an issue. Um, it's probably more, more likely you're freely giving away uh, your data versus somebody stealing it from you. Mm -hmm. Um, and the question on the distractions, because there's another one coming in about is it more risky when you download open source apps? Uh, interestingly enough, no. Um, I, I mean, again, we, we can't make blanket statements on anything. But in fact, uh, like for a long time, companies and government uh, would, would ban open source software. They say we never have open source software. But actually, open source software is because it's open, it means many developers can look at it and see it and know it. Um, it's harder for stuff to hide or get stuck in there because it's open to the public. So this is, it's actually, a, if the more transparent it is, it's actually sometimes there's more secure. There's sometimes more security in being open and transparent versus black boxing and hiding it in. So. Interesting. Fewer places to hide. And then, there you <laughs> <go>. <laughs> um, so yeah. So the so the advice to reduce protect against notifications. Absolutely. So uh, again, we we get very you know reactive to things. Um, even you know, it, just and so uh, making sure your phone. Well, again, one option, and we're running short on time, is to just set your phone or laptop, just be away from it. But if you're at it, let, you're writing your book, you're doing work, you have something to do, turn off notifications. You can do that on your, uh, your phone or your laptop. You can dismiss notifications, go on a do not disturb or a privacy mode. Sometimes it's a little bit more of discipline, but the, the software can enforce it or help you with that. Uh, so, but absolutely use privacy mode, uh, do not disturb settings, shut down your mail and, how great is it to, for you to be in control and go check your email? I know we always think, oh, an email came in, I have to stop what I'm doing. A message came in, uh, a text message came in. If it came in, I have to look at it and respond now. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> but I must. <laughs> but I must, it must be important. Uh, so, you know, and you, you'll need to decide what the best frequency is. And guess what? Maybe Andrea is listening and will like this. Experiment, try something for a period of time, whether it's a week, 30 days, two weeks. Um, that might be how you find what works for you. You know, I, I'm coming here saying I can't tell you what to do exactly. Um, what probably is, I knew Andrew would like that. So experiment with it. I like the, this, this whole me and a bedtime thing. I was really resistant because I said, but sometimes I have to stay up because I have to do this. No, it's been working great for me. I don't do it every night. I do it four nights a week, but it's helpful. Same thing. Try using do not disturb uh, for period. Try again, depending on your job, your, your, what you need to do. I'll shut down my email program and I'll, I'll check it once every hour. Maybe you can go half a, half a day. Maybe you have times that you won't do it. You can even, you know, maybe you can train your coworkers and colleagues to know that during certain times you will not respond. Um, you know, again, you have to do what's right for you, but experiment, try something. You won't know if you don't try. The one thing I have to say, and I am doing a time check too, is I don't know how and to the point of maybe privacy, my browser, I get all these notifications from things I never signed up for. So I actually have to go into my settings and literally turn off. And I'm like, I, I never even agreed to it. Sometimes they get really weird. Like, how did I ever sign up to this? And I mildly get frightened. But then I just think I probably clicked on something who then shared my info. The next thing you know, I'm getting updates from. Yes. You say you didn't agree to it. They could probably point to something that said you did. Um, but yeah, we, we click, we don't know. Uh, you know, when you use social logins, this is again, convenience. Um, when you go to a website, nobody wants to create their own login for every website. So it's so great when you see that login with your Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram. Fantastic. It's convenient. Your grand bargain is I'm going to do this for you. It's, it is secure. But somewhere in there, there's an agreement that somebody is going to be able to know who you are and what that information is. And they're probably going to sell you something. Again, at least with corporations, we, years ago, we used to think, oh, Big Brother's watching. No, we're freely giving our information to corporations. However, we're getting something in return for it, maybe. So um, again, be, be mindful of what you're doing. Um, 
Meta, I'm going to jump to another slide only because, as I said, this can go many directions. Um, and, and, you know, again, we can get into different specifics about security and privacy and which apps are good and bad and, and how to detox. But I want to hit a few points before we go, because really, as you develop your own plan, you'll need to figure out what's going to work for you. So um, a couple of things to think about is you have to know yourself and your habits. Um, so exam for example, you might be somebody who you cannot control yourself if the phone or laptop is in Ruth reach. Maybe you need to be in a different room from your phone. For When we say, hey, don't look at your phone for an hour, you have to physically remove yourself. You need to know yourself and your habits. Maybe you can do an assessment of what you're doing right now. A lot of phones will tell you about your screen time usage and what you've been doing. You could you know, review that and see, oh, this is what I didn't realize that I was staring at my phone so much. Um, but if you know yourself and your habits, and, and this goes, and we're talking about the negatives and, and, and sort of the restrictions, but let's look at positives too. As we're looking at wellness, I use, um, whether it's my laptop, I use my phone a lot for my exercise and my yoga and headspace. I use that as well. So I actually use that to actively support myself. Um, for me, I, for, I was new to meditation at the beginning of the year. And for me, I found that headspace, I like that, that helped me. So for me, I need that and I find that very supportive. Um, in terms of, I do yoga, um, sometimes long sessions, sometimes short sessions every day. And for me, I can use an app. I actually just use YouTube. I get free 10 minute yoga, 15 minute yoga in the workout. That works for me, but I understand it doesn't work for everyone. Um, so, you know, not everyone can do it from an app. Some of you need to have a class. You need somebody live telling you what to do. So you have to know yourself. Um, I will say the reason I am so, I think, committed to being able to and disciplined to being able to do the app on my own for exercise and yoga and meditation is because I'm also accountable to a group uh, where I need to report every day that I've been doing that. So that might be what's actually motivating me. But for me, I can do those exercises. And I, and I gladly, I mean, I have my phone because that tracks my steps. It, and it's, it's got YouTube, it's got my apps for uh, meditation. So that works for me. Um, balance and boundaries. Uh, again, that's, um, that's, that's kind of looking at that, that it's, I, there's nothing wrong with binge watching, nothing wrong with, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you do want to check the news, but when I find out I'm looking at the news every five minutes, that's probably, I could probably check once a day and know what's going on in the world and then get on with my life. Um, this next one, digital and analog. This is the one that I, I really you know, want to make sure we, we are, we hit upon is digital and analog. Um, and I'm going to stop this for a minute because I realize I've got that, that up on the screen is sometimes you don't need the technology. You may think you need it, but you absolutely do not. Um, and we just so attached to it, we think we need it. So for example, uh, my mother is a voracious reader. She loves reading. So for her, an e-reader, a Kindle or her iPad is, is amazing. It's fantastic. It supports her. Me, I sit staring at a screen all day long. So I have a practice of reading. And when I read, I read a real book. I don't want to read on a screen because for me, my screen time is, is excessive. I like the feel of reading the book. I like the getting away with the phone. Also, I'm a human, I'm a father, I have two kids. When I'm looking at a screen, they see me looking at a screen. They don't know, am I doing something nourishing or am I binge watching? They don't know, oh, daddy's doing work that's important or no, daddy spent five hours shopping for stuff. You know, so it's also good for me to model to them when I tell them they need to get off the screens. Hey, look, daddy's reading a book. Daddy's, okay, I've got my phone out, but you see me doing my, my tree pose right now. And so that is supporting my healthy habits. So um, taking a look at what you can do analog and ditch the digital. These are exceedingly convenient because we have everything in one spot. You said the URLs, the tabs in one spot. I can have my, I can have my, my work, my play, my books, my movies, uh, you know, everything good, bad, and ugly all in this one spot. But you know what? Maybe I ditch the phone at night and I get an old school alarm clock to wake me up because we all say, Oh, I need my phone. Cause that's my alarm. It's wakes me up or, Oh, I need my phone for my step tracker. Well, you know, maybe you get like the Fitbit or, and here's something I'm going to say that could be controversial too. I use a step tracker because I want to see how many steps I'm taking. I use many of these apps. Some of you might be sleep tracking and that's good if you're having sleep issues or you want to watch that. Sometimes people go too far and they get too obsessed with counting the steps. They get too obsessed with their sleep tracking it that it actually becomes negative and counterproductive. So you also have to do a gut check and assessment of, 
are you so stressed and focused on the steps? Put the phone down and just walk, just sleep. You have to know yourself for that. Uh, Meta, I'm gonna just mention a couple more things because then I think we're winding down on our time. But again, we could talk about this forever. Uh, things to keep in mind, if you know what your overall goals, you can see with how your digital practices align with those goals. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you're usually consuming or connecting or doing some sort of communication. Uh, and those again, can be good or bad. You can consume healthy you know, content. You can also consume negative content. But if you look at those aspects and kind of gauge you know, when you're, you know, what your limitations, what's positive, what's negative. Oh, experiment. Yes, I put this on the slide just for Andrea because it works so well for me. Experiment, um, try something. Try, try an app or try not using an app. You know, try something, just change it. Um, and then of course, as we said, we talk about screen time negative, we talk about negative news, we're on social media, we're stalking our exes, we're wondering what could have been by looking at people's social media. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of supportive wellness apps, whether it's a nutrition counter, whether it's a step tracker, whether it's an exercise app, um, all of this can definitely uh, help. Yeah, there's actually one thing I wanted to add to the whole consuming, connecting and communication. Um, it's it's the whole quantity versus quality time. And I think that sometimes uh, we think FaceTime, well, one, it, it's it's so different to have uh, social interactions like Zoom happy hours are different than in-person happy hours. Uh, I've actually been just to see the, the quality and the color of the human interaction um, when you're meeting someone through a friend or you're kind of doing it because you got matched on a dating app or you're kind of tinderating your way through. Yes, these conversations may be, you know, you, you get to know similar things about each other, but just the nature of the source of the communication, I notice greatly affects um, the depth and the color of the interaction. I mean, just, just a small example, like when I have, when we have happy hours with real, you know, friends, you can have six people around a table and it feels very flowy and natural. I notice when you have six people on a Brady Bunch screen, it actually gets kind of chaotic. So, so oftentimes um, it's, it's been interesting to think about what kind, the, the color of the communication and, and what the digital medium does to affect the feel or the connection of it so that um, it might not be as nourishing uh, online as it is offline. And so it's not like having five happy hours that are on Zoom, you know, five days in a row is not the same as seeing five different friends in the real world and having real dinner with real people or half half. So Absolutely. that's something. Absolutely. So, and again, uh, we, just to be clear, yes, um, Zoom happy hours, Zoom calls, all, all of this, you know, staying connected, that is not a, we're humans and that is not a replacement for in person. It fortunately allows us to, to not be completely disconnected. Again, I can send someone a message, a, a text message, and that's a connection. That's not as good as a phone call, which is not as good as a video call, which is not as good as, or the same as being in person. Um, so absolutely, especially in these times, I mean, it's great that we can connect with people. We know people all around the world and technology allows us to connect with them when otherwise we wouldn't. We recently attended a Zoom wedding and obviously it's not the same experience as being there. However, it was a little more inclusive because a lot of people attended who had it been a different world, I probably would not have attended that wedding live where you might have, but I was able to attend because of technology. But again, we're looking at it all, um, yeah. you know, and what works for us. So yeah, it was just the, the, the color, the quality, the color of the connection. Um, and if it adds to the wellness, like more is better or not. So that was just kind of a, a thought that I had and I'm curious if, and, you know, maybe we all sort of can think about that. I got to say that when, when we first started locking down and everybody was saying uh, Zoom happy hours or, or all of these things, my first thought was I'm on Zoom all day long and I search so much with work. I don't want to look at people. I don't want to look at people socially because I was just so, I was like, I just stare at people all day on screens for work. I don't want to do it again for social. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on, though. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, again, you all can log off. I'll keep talking till 2 a.m. because I got a lot more I can say as I get going. But um, no, I'm glad I could be a part. As, as I said, this is all just another element in the wellness journey, uh, uh, you know, in all of our wellness journeys. So um, it sounds like the main takeaways always start with the uh, perception of awareness and intention and mindfulness. I mean, if I'm trying to do the quick wrap up kind of the tape go away thing, and the other one is boundaries, the, the whole dosage of, of what it is. Um, so it's like your intention and then like your dosage of what you're choosing to do and then making sure that you're secure and you're private in going about doing whatever it is that you're doing. 
Is that kind of like the three, if you've got three levers to pull, that's absolutely, what's... absolutely. So take, so pull on those levels, experiment, see what works for you. Cause what works for me may not work for meta may not work for you, but definitely play with those. Okay, cool. Thank you. Any last final words before I just move on to the next slide, our closing slide? Or... Uh, as I said before, uh, I'm as a professional technologist, feel free to ditch technology. Just ditch it. <laughs> the conclusion of the day is, is just give it up. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming tonight, Jay. And thanks so much for um, joining. And for those of you who are just, this is kind of the tip of the iceberg because it isn't organic. It's, it's like a soft topic, yet it's also a hard topic. Um, coming in September, um, just separate from these webinars, um, I'll be joining Jay uh, as we're going to be collaborating on a completely separate podcast series that talks about the concept of cyber wellness. As you can see, this is actually more about wellness and how technology flows into it. So we'll be having like uh, speakers uh, also, but we're also just having a dialogue uh, between Jay and I, a lot more of our personal stories, just sort of our experiences in life. And hopefully the whole idea is whoever tunes in, you'll just feel a little more empowered and inspired um, with a tech enhanced life. So if any of you are curious, it's just to stay tuned, uh, make sure you sign up for the Juara newsletter and because we'll be announcing it there. It's not technically a Juara project. It is a Meta Merdaya, uh, myself, uh, because I, I am very passionate about wellness as a function of integration of a lot of our lives um, together. So balancing things that might not seem like it makes any sense, you know, like, oh, finance, technology, um, you know, psychiatry, uh, skincare, what the heck do they have to do in common? Um, us, we're the human that has to deal with all of those. And if one aspect of it was just not in good shape, like the financial aspect, or it could be the skin and the health, the beauty aspect, it can really throw off our sense of wellness. So so it's not just superficial, you know, in, it's, you know, skin and food, but it's, it's everything. So that is coming up. So stay tuned for that. Um, and please connect with us. Um, this is, you know, all our information on the right, but for Jay, uh, that's, that's, uh, you know, Hey, Jay, we can connect with you on LinkedIn um, and his Instagram and Honey Rosa T-shirts. That is your podcast. So uh, th this is. And that has nothing to do with technology <laughs> or cyber wellness. That's actually just a, a, a travel podcast of a of long ago and far away. It's part of my wellness journey to get it out there. Um, and I'm using technology to do it. But yeah, don't be confused if you listen to it and don't get any tips on, uh, on antivirus software. Yeah, I, I love that it's your personal artistic project. You know, so when you think of artists, the people, you know, I write music or I paint or I cook and yours is, you know, creating this, this just sort of, you know, chronicle of, of your travels. So if you're curious about that, check that out. Um, and I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thanks for joining for the last webinar um, of this season. And um, yes, it will be evolving into more fun and better things and probably a wellness seminar uh, at the end of the year. But again, stay tuned for that. And so I'll say thank you and goodbye, everyone. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and we will all speak with you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.